Hello and welcome to the BSR TV GT Sprint Cup here from Brands Hatch Grand Prix Circuit. Um, I'm Marcus Narris, I'll be guiding you through the action tonight and if last week was anything to go by there'll certainly be a little bit of, uh, of action between now and the end of the race. Um, for those that missed last week's uh, first round of the season, we've had a few changes in the BSR TV uh, GT Sprint Cup uh, for this year so I'll just quickly run through them um, as we uh, run into the last kind of four minutes of the driver's warm-up session. Rather than having two 25-minute short sprint races, which we had last season, uh, this year we're running one 40-minute um, mini endurance race, really, if you, if you want to call it that. It's still technically a sprint race, of course. Um, but what's, uh, what's changed this season uh, for the, with the most effect is, is the addition of a, a mandatory pit stop. So these cars are fuel limited. The uh, series organisers have limited the amount of fuel you can squeeze into these guys, which means that uh, every driver uh, out here has to take a, a pit stop at some stage of the race. Uh, what we saw last week was generally people were splitting the, the strategy straight down the middle. Um, we had one very, very early stop and one very, very late stop, but for the most part, uh, everyone was stopping within the same kind of two uh, laps right in the centre of the race. This, is, of course, is, uh, is being put in place to get guys used to coming in for, for pit stops. The, the intention being that next season's BSR TV GT Cup um, will be a, uh, a series of hour-long races that will feature mandatory pit stops with driver changes. I racing uh, looking to introduce driver changes for next season, and it's something that we want to take advantage of here at BSR TV and um, include in the, the, the GT Sprint Cup going forward. So what I mentioned last week, we had a fairly interesting race last week. It was a race of, uh, of opposites, really, at the top of the field. We had a very, very steady, very safe drive from uh, Oki Stokenberger, who took the win last week at Silverstone. Um, in contrast to that, we had a very up and down uh, race from uh, from Ash Sutton. Um, Ash spun, I think, three times. There was some contact in there. Uh, at one point in the race, found himself down in 17th uh, position, but fought his way back to, to second place. A fairly distant second place, it has to be said, but nonetheless second place. So... Um, those two lead uh, the championship, obviously only having had one round, uh, the championship standings are the, the, the results from race one at Silverstone. So Oki Stokenberger leads the way on 50 points, uh, 10 points behind him in second place is Ashley Sutton. Uh, third place and a fantastic result last week, some great defensive driving from Julian Familiaris who would be delighted to be sitting in third at the moment, he's on 35 points. Uh, Kia Soglu Nestoras uh, is in fourth place, Nigel Owen, um, he of the McLaren MP4. Uh, 12C is uh, in fifth place ahead of Ivan Fernandez. Um, all changed last week in terms of uh, Ivan Fernandez and some of his teammates. We really didn't see the um, domination from the Mediterranean guys that we've seen certainly last season throughout the Spring Cup. Um, everyone's back this week though, so maybe that will change. Uh, as it is, Ivan Fernandez leads the charge. Her Jerome Kaiser was seventh place. Michael Booth was in eighth place, just ahead of Michael Hall. Uh, and Michael Stephen for Team of Stream Racing rounds out the top 10. So we've only got a 10 race season this year, obviously a consequence of having longer um, but single races means that uh, one bad result can really have a significant impact on your championship. So we did see last week to a certain extent that uh, a lot of the field were taking it reasonably easy, um, really not wanting to overdo it, get themselves into trouble. So we're really starting to see a GT style of driving coming into this championship and that can only be a good thing going forward. Uh, the more conservative and uh, studied these guys are, um, the, the, the much, much better racing we see in the last kind of 10, uh, 15 minutes of the race. So the drivers are just coming to the end of their warm-up session and in terms of times through that warm-up session the quickest driver out there is Sylvain Pomerard in the number 28 machine. Um, quick times around here um, for these guys, uh, a, a mid-123s. Um, Sylvain Pomerard for that fastest time in the warm-up was uh, banging in a 123.3 so that's quite an aggressive time. Uh, just behind him is Juan Jose Sanchez. Juan Jose didn't have a great week last week. Uh, a, a point illustrated by the fact he doesn't really feature in the top 10 at all um, but he was second quickest in warm-up with Noel Lumberg who again had a bit of, bit of an eventful race uh, last week he'll certainly be wanting to, to try and do a little bit better this week um, he was the third quickest in the warm-up session so the, the cars are starting to assemble on the grid now um, we'll have a rolling start so we'll have a full lap um, behind the safety car behind the pace car um, while these guys get themselves up to speed and get themselves organised. 
and after that pace lap we'll be uh, be off and running. In terms of the grid, um, these guys qualified just a little while ago. Um, in pole position is Juan Jose Sanchez, as we said. Didn't have a great week last week, and he'll be looking to do a hell of a lot better this week. Um, he took pole position in a time of 123.216. Just ahead of uh, Ashley Owen in the McLaren MP4-12C, the very distinctive uh, blue and orange golf uh colours, it's a, an Aston Martin livery but it looks very good on that that McLaren if you ask me um, he was just literally a couple of hundred slower than uh, Juan Jose Sanchez, so Ashley Owen has uh, really got some pace as the, the, the cars pull away now behind the safety car. Sylvain Pomerade is in third place um, with a 123.3 um, he's alongside uh, Angel Sayers 1 um, in the number 27 machine. Uh, Michael Booth is in fifth place, uh, lining up next to him is, is Tom Ward uh, Alain Tessier, a uh, series regular last season, certainly through the early part of the season, not so much towards the end of the season, uh, is in seventh place. He'll be delighted with that. Um, and we know certainly that um, Alain Tessier is a very, very quick guy, so it'll be worth keeping an eye out for the yellow and blue um, liveried uh, roof. It'll, it'll certainly be uh, uh, doing everything it can to get its way up through the field uh, sooner rather than later. In eighth place is Noel Lundberg. Uh, ninth is Richard Wilde. 10 is Jose Almeida, just ahead of Michael Stephen in the green, uh, white and uh, black Team Extreme machine. Uh, Arthur Chan is in 12th with Rinch Jacobs, Michael Hall and BSR TV's own Matthew Dalton running, rounding out the top 15. So this is going to be a fairly interesting race. These guys are going to have to take it easy on the, the first lap. Um, obviously Paddock Hill Bend is all kinds of fun. Um, if you're just hot lapping on your own but in a crowd going through turn one um, with the additional speed that you carry from a rolling start um, it can be a very tricky cornering indeed so these guys will be looking to do everything they can to, to keep it safe in case of other uh, other points on the circuit that could see some action um, coming out the, the long left hander onto the back straight at Surtees um, is very very difficult what we found last week was uh, with the balance of performance of these GT cars, and I'll hopefully be able to touch on that as we go through the evening and uh, I get the opportunity to, to talk a little bit about uh, what iRacing have done with these cars over the last uh, few weeks. We see that the BMW is very, very good in the uh, twisty sections. Um, not quite as uh, aggressive as the roof in the tight twisty stuff, but very, very good in the twisty stuff and very, very good um, on the straights. Not as quick as the McLaren, but it does spin its wheels up. It's very torquey. Um, so these guys are going to have to be careful. The guys in the BMWs and the traction zones are going to have to be very, very, very careful. So everybody forms up. We get nice and close. Um, the lead, the leader uh, of the pack now, Juan Jose Sanchez, is effectively the safety car. Ashley Owen just gets a little bit ahead of him, and as Ashley Owen has to come off the gas, Juan Jose Sanchez takes advantage of that and gets right on the, the throttle. Uh, really leaves everyone in, trailing in his wake. So. Um, He's away by a good seven or eight car lengths as they go through Paddock Hill for the first time. Juan Jose Sanchez leads Ashley Owen away. Um, and we weren't kidding, Sylvain Pomerade um, making a great start, getting away really, really well. Um, he co he's currently running in fourth place. He's right up the, the tailpipe of Angel Sayers Juan um, in the, the blue and black um, X Team car. You may not be familiar with that car, it's a new entry for this season. Um, Further down the field, it looks to me like we've we've had a fairly safe um, first lap. Um, there certainly don't seem to be any cars <laughs> lying by the side of the road or uh, otherwise destroyed or looking particularly second-hand. So I think we've managed to get away with a fairly um, clean start. There were a couple of incidents by all accounts, but, but nothing serious. Um, majority of the pack still running and running very, very close nose to tail. And these guys will be looking to, to get away at the front if they can do. And the guys that didn't get the, the greatest starts will be looking to, to make up as many places as they possibly can do. Um, and echoing that, the, the, the key battle at the moment seems to be between uh, Angel Sayas Juan, currently running in third place, um, with Sylvain Pomerade right behind him. Um, Pomerade in the, that very distinctive yellow and blue Porsche with the orange wheels. He's going to be looking to do everything he can to get past of uh, Juan in front of him. Um, Juan certainly seems to have the pace on him through the the long drag uh, up the start finish straight. And it'll be interesting to see if Pomeray can get close as they come up into Druids. Uh, tight on the brakes, very, very tight. And indeed, Pomeray's very, very quick through the apex of Druids. And as they come out onto um, the downhill run into Graham Hill Bend and then out onto the, the, the back straight, 
um, it's a, as close as it's been. Um, Angel Sayas Juan will be doing everything he can do to, to try and stretch the legs of that McLaren. We know and we saw from last week that the McLaren is very, very quick on the straights. They can get the power down very, very quickly. So Angel Sayas Juan should be able to tr just hold uh, Sylvain Pomerade at bay as they run down Hawthorne Hill and into Hawthorne's uh, the tight right-hander. But now we're coming back into uh, roof country. Sylvain Pomerade with the advantage as they drop down, um, dingle down now and set the cars up, get them as far left as they possibly can do without getting on the grass for the very, very tight blind right-hander just gone through there at Sheen um, before they drop down into Sterling's. And it looks like uh, Hanke, Angel Sayers 1 um, is managing to hold everybody at bay. Um, but I think he is slowing down Sylvain Pomerade. Um, that being borne out by the fact that there's a, not you, you couldn't call it a train forming behind, uh, but certainly Tom Ward in the number nine uh, machine behind Pomerade is, is closer than he was at the start of this lap um, and absolutely Ashley Owen in the number 17 um, Golf uh, coloured McLaren is uh, further away so um, to a certain extent I think Angel Sayas Juan is the, the cork in the bottle and as I say that again Sylvain Pomerade gets a fantastic drive out of Druids they run down too wide into Graham Hill Bend Juan on the inside Pomerade on the outside able to take advantage of the, the very generous runoff iRacing still gives you we're not running to MSA rules in iRacing quite yet so you can go off the circuit there uh, and again the superior traction of the roof comes into play as Sylvain Pomerade makes an incredible move around the outside of Surtees but he's got Andro, uh, Angel Sayas Juan right next to him and again Again, that McLaren able to, to pull away under acceleration. It really is the quicker of the three cars in a straight line. Not by very much, by, but by enough to, to take that position back from Pomerade and, and put two or three car lengths into him. Uh, meanwhile, behind Pomerade, um, Tom Ward is looking very, very interested, very, very racy. And these guys racing and, and slowing each other down has brought Michael Booth into play. And um, those that are regular fans of GT racing here on iRacing will know that that if there's a GT series happening somewhere it's usually got Michael Booth in it so he's a very seasoned campaigner he's a, a guy that likes his GT racing and is very very at home in this kind of format race so as we go to begin um, what will be the fourth lap uh, of this race um, again, Pomerade looking around the outside, side by side, trying to get the overlap. He's going to look for the cutback as they run up Halewood Hill. Uh, he's got the inside line into Druids. Can he get it slowed down? Yes, he does. That roof is very, very agile on the, the apex, and he's away and clear. Um, Angel Sayas Juan now has uh, Tom Ward alongside him for company, and it's very, very close. Ward very close to the back of Juan and Booth very, very close to the back of Ward, but these guys, they know what they're doing. They managed to avoid contact. We now have a six-car train due to all the battling that's been taking place. I can see um, from this distinctive colour scheme and his um, light blue wheels that Noel Lundberg has tagged himself onto the back of this little chain. Uh, so has Alain Tessier, who we commented on the start, be looking to, to make his way through the pack. So it certainly does seem like uh, Angel Sayas Juan was... Uh, holding these guys up a little bit. Um, Sylvain Pomerade is off into the distance. Um, he's pulling away at a hell of a rate. Um, it looks like he's going to have an advantage of seven, eight tenths of a second by the end of this lap. Um, and Sayas One now has wing, uh, his rear view mirror is absolutely full of uh, Tom Ward. And likewise, Tom Ward has got Michael Booth all over the back of him and Noel Lundberg and uh, Alan Tessier are just sitting there waiting for these guys to make a mistake because it's too wide uh, through clearways. Um, up onto the, the Brabham straight. Um, I don't think Tom Ward is going to get this move done, to be honest with you. He's going to have to tuck in, and by putting himself on the outside line, he's given the, the canny old campaigner, uh, Michael Booth, an opportunity to just tuck that roof right up behind um, Angel Sayers Juan's uh, MP4. And there's slight contact there, and Sayers Juan is very, very slow out of the corner. Um, and there's damage to the front of Michael Booth's car just as they ran down the hill there towards uh, the very quick left hand of Graham Hill Bend. Um, you just saw the right front of Michael Booth's car deform there. There wasn't any visible contact, so it looks like that was a bit of a net code issue, but Michael Booth certainly doesn't be, seem to be suffering any adverse effects as uh, Noel Lundberg now lines up. Um, Ang Angel Sayers won. Um, he's decided it's his turn. He's had enough of being held up and um, he's going to try and if he can squirrel his way past him um, as certainly if you seem to anyone who seems to be able to get past uh, the number 27 McLaren um, is disappearing off into the distance um, just to bear out what we said from uh, the last race um, the, the last lap sorry uh, Sylvain Pomerade uh, managed to 
to pull away to the tune of 1.7 seconds uh, on the, his first clear lap past uh, Han Angel Sayers one. So um, he certainly is uh, holding everybody up. And as, as you look in front, uh, Tom Ward and Michael Booth uh, are scampering away. So uh, Noel Lundberg is going to be seeing that and he's going to be desperate to get past as he tries to look up the inside. He gets a little bit of a squeeze from um, Angel Sayers one, but not too much. Very, very good, very responsible driving there. And uh, Noel Lundberg is through and uh, he's off a... Uh, chasing after to Michael Booth um, so let's just gather our breath a fairly breathless start then with uh, with all that action going on um, let's have a, a bit of a look at the race positions we, we're coming up to, to eight minutes gone in this 40 minute race so Juan Jose Sanchez leads um, by just over two tenths of a second at the start of the last lap um, from uh, Ashley Owen and you can see um, visibly how close this is um, this, this circuit here at Brands Hatch, the Brands Hatch GP circuit really does bring out the, the individual characteristics of each car um, it's got a bit of everything it's got some very very fast straights which is enabling uh, the guys in the McLarens to cruise up behind the, the roofs and the BMWs but it's got some very very high traction zones and if the, BM the guys in the BMWs can time it right um, with the additional torque that iRacing have put through the, the drivetrain of the BMW for, for, for those that weren't aware last season the first season of the BMW Z4 GT3 here on iRacing it was down on torque um, being the the big engine flat six that it is it, it's a very very low low end engine it, it cr generates a lot of torque um, and that torque tends to drop off quite quickly at high revs so for those that are fans of Formula 1 at the moment, you'll recognise that a lot of the drivers are struggling to get the power down. The, the cars just have too much power and they want to just rotate and spin on the spot. The, the BMW has the same problem, but if you can time it prop correctly, if you can apply the power uh, in the right way, what it gives you, it gives you absolutely monumental drive off the corner um, and gives you an opportunity to put a gap on the, the faster McLaren. Um, that said, uh, Juan Jose Sanchez didn't get a great exit uh, out of 30s there, and as they run into to Hawthorns, Ashley Owen is very, very close behind him, and he's looking up the inside of them. Um, just as they run down now into Dingledale, can he keep it on the road? Yeah, he can. Ashley Owen, I thought he'd gone too deep. I thought he was going to run wide, and we'd see him in the, uh, the barrier on the outside of Dingledale there, but he's managed to gather it up, and as they flash up through uh, the left, uh, the right-hander, sorry, at Sheen, and now through the left-hander at Sterling's, uh, and race towards the Advan Bridge. Um, Ashley Owen in the uh, Golf uh, McLaren liveried um, McLaren MP412C has uh, made his way past Juan Jose Sanchez and is um, certainly intending to scamper away. We'll have to see what Juan Jose Sanchez can do about that. So anyway, I was before these guys started fighting, I was giving you a rundown on position. So uh, it's it's cha obviously all changed now. So Ashley Owen leads by uh, about half a second as they cross the start finish line from Juan Jose Sanchez. Uh, Silvan Pomerade uh, is in third place, and you can see in the background Pomerade is. It looks to me like he's closing on these two. He's. Uh, uh, I certainly don't remember seeing him flashing around in the background on my screen um, on the previous lap, but he's absolutely there now. Um, he leads uh, Tom Ward. Tom Ward's in fourth place. Michael Booth is in fifth place. Uh, Noel Lundberg has made his way up into to sixth place. Um, Alan Tessier currently running in seventh place. Um, Jose Almeida, ninth. Uh, Angel Sayas, Juan, who we saw um, doing a great job of defending for the first few laps of this race, um, is down in ninth place now. And Michael Stephen rounds out the top ten. Um, so it really is all happening. Um, here at Brands Hatch, I, th I thought it would be a, an exciting and an interesting race, but I certainly didn't think it would be quite this close. So as we have a look through the field, I'm just having a, a bit of a look, see where the battles are. Again, um, these different cars having different characteristics really does make this GT racing great this, this season. And again, it's... Our friend uh, Angel Sayas Juan currently running in ninth place uh, again has, has collected a little group of friends behind him. He's got Michael Stephen and uh, those regular viewers of uh, BSR uh, TV GT Sprint Racing will know that Michael Stephen um, certainly wouldn't be in the top three of uh, the world's most patient men, um, being polite, um, as we see him um, throw the nose of that BMW Z4 GT3 up the inside of 
Angel Sayers won. And he gets away with it. Sayers won is slow again. He's trying to defend his position this time from, uh, it looks like Arthur Chan in the number 50 machine. It is indeed Arthur Chan in the uh, white, orange and black roof. And um, Angel Sayers run is just dropping place after place as uh, Richard Wilde and uh, now Michael Hall, by the looks of it, make their way past. Um, so he's dropped four places uh, in the space of three corners. Uh, all of that um, kicked off by uh, Michael Stephen making a, uh, a very strong but very, very fair move, getting his nose underneath uh, Angel Sayers Juan, who couldn't quite keep that uh, McLaren MP4 12C on the apex at Druids. Um, and that led to a very slow sequence of corners with uh, Sayers Juan held on the outside of the circuit. And it just gave an opportunity for um, everybody around him just really to blast past him. But it's still very, very close. Um, all the way through this train, which is now led by um, Michael Stephen. We've got a very, very tight train of seven or eight cars running um, within three seconds of one another. So all the way from uh, Michael Stephen in ninth place, um, back down to Rince Jacobs in the number seven machine, who's just behind Sayers one now. Um, in the orange and black uh, BMW Z4, uh, it was just over three seconds separating those guys, so um, it's very tight, very, very close stuff. These guys will now be starting to think about uh, their pit strategy. There's uh, 26 minutes of this race remaining, so they've got about six and a half minutes to the halfway point of the race. And as we said, last week we saw the pit strategies pretty much slice the race in two. Um, these guys keen to take advantage of um, the fa as much fast running as they could do, so they didn't want to run heavy or um, in an early stint and, and run the risk of being overtaken. Um, as they were running slowly with a very heavy car, so they, they cut it straight down the middle, and I'll be interested to see if they do much the same thing here this week. So if we have a quick look back up front, um, as predicted, Ashley Owen is, is really get on, getting on with it. He's, uh, he's put um, seven tenths of a second on Juan Jose Sanchez and it, it looked like Juan Jose Sanchez had a, again a bit of a power wobble coming out of paddock there it's as we said the, the BMW is great if you can get the power down correctly but if you're not quite spot on with it you're going to struggle you're going to be in, in trouble unfortunately um, and it, it looks like he's trying probably a little bit too hard to try and catch um, Ashley Owen ahead and he's He's just getting himself involved in a, a few incidents that maybe he doesn't need to. Um, and he certainly looks to be having a, uh, a few issues getting on the power, coming out of corners. Um, it's certainly causing him a, a little bit of an issue. Um, it's, um, it's, he's certainly overdriving it a little bit. So Ashley Owen now leads um, by what I would guess at the end of the lap is going to be in the region of... Um, a second or so. Um, second place is BMW Z4 GT, uh, GT3 of Juan Jose Sanchez and Sylvain Pomerade uh, behind in the roof um, chasing these guys down. Um, so those who were regular viewers last year will probably be a little bit surprised by the fact that we've got um, all three manufacturers in this GT3 series represented in the top three on the track. Last year was very much a, a season that was dominated by uh, the BMWs. Um, they had uh, very, very good top-end speed, um, very, very good high rev speed, which wasn't necessarily realistic. Uh, the BMWs were very, very difficult to get out of cor uh, sorry, the McLarens very, very difficult to get out of corners um, and take advantage of their top speed. And the roof was a little bit down on power, so iRacing, by their own admission, balanced these cars uh, this season. It looks like they've done a pretty good job of it, because certainly in this top three, and it's brilliant to see that the different three different manufacturers running in the top three but that's replicated all the way down the field you could look literally at any kind of four or five cars down through the the order and there's a good mix of manufacturers and last year um that absolutely wouldn't have been the case you know there were huge clumps of uh, bmws and and to be honest not a lot else going on um so i'm just looking down through the uh, the list and seeing where the movers and shakers are um just pick out some of the names there um, we usually see running at the front. One of those being Linus Brostrom in the number 71 uh, McLaren. He's got um, Ellis Stevens and Stephen Burke right behind him. Stephen Burke, a very robust racer. Um, Ellis Stevens, uh, a quick guy, um, uh, front runner in the BSR TV touring car series. Uh, but 
Linus Brostrom certainly got his, his hands full in that distinctive green uh, movie go racing McLaren. Um, Stephen Burke is certainly looking very, very racy, although Stephen Burke cuts a hell of a lot out of Sheen Kerb there. I'll be uh, very, very surprised if he didn't pick a slowdown up then. He was, had all four wheels and then some off the circuit, and that's a tricky corner if you get it wrong. And he looks to make a move down the inside going into clearways. Can't quite get it done. Um, Linus Prostrom manages to get on the power, and now he'll be looking to try and take advantage of the superior straight line speed of that McLaren. Um, while Ellis Stevens in the uh, number 17 eBay Motors machine behind keeps a watching brief. Um, knowing Stevens as we do, he'll certainly pounce if either of these guys make any kind of mistake. Um, but I don't think he's going to want to get involved with um, um, the, the bumper to bumper stuff that's going on in front of him. And indeed, that's borne out as uh, Stephen Burke gets a bit of a power wobble coming down the hill. Uh, Ellis Stevens is more than happy just to just to temper the throttle there and uh, hang around behind Stephen Burke and uh, it looks to me he's got what he wanted, yeah absolutely, Stephen Burke overcooks it, Ellis Stevens takes the place without really having a fight for it so very very grown up, very mature, very intelligent driving there from Stevens um, I think he's aware having raced around um, Stephen Burke before, Stephen Burke is a very very quick guy but he does make the odd mistake here and there and um, Stevens could see that he was absolutely desperate to get past uh, Linus Brostrom and was probably distracted by the fact that he couldn't uh, and without really having to make very much of an effort um, Ellis Stevens takes the place um, and will now be running in uh, 17th position so as we approach uh, half distance of the race um, these guys will start thinking about pit stops soon um, I would imagine that we would see the majority of the pit stops taking place with about 18 minutes of the race remaining so um, maybe not at the end of this lap uh, but probably towards the end of the next lap um, we'll start to see people coming in um, two laps out we'll definitely see uh, significantly more people coming in the big news up front is that Sylvain Pomerade is by some comfortable distance um, the quickest guy in the top three at the moment um, he's turning uh, laps in the region of uh, high 123 his last two laps have been a 1238 and a 1239 uh, and that compares with um, Juan Jose Sanchez in front of him who's been in the 24s for uh, both of the previous laps not deep into the 24s but uh, on lap 13 um, he was four tenths of a second slower than um, uh, Sylvain Pomerard behind him uh, Ashley Owen up front is um, it looks like he's starting to struggle with that McLaren a little bit because his last two laps have been de relatively deep into the 24s. He just recovers now to put a uh, 124-1 on the board for lap 14. Uh, but again, behind him, um, Sylvain Pomerard makes it three 123 laps in a row with a 123-936. Uh, the consequence of all that is that Pomerad, who was three seconds behind these guys um, at the start of lap 11, now finds himself only... 1.8 seconds behind the leader and one second behind Juan Jose Sanchez as we begin lap 15 so um, the agility of that um, roof certainly being uh, taken full advantage of by the ever quick Sylvain Pomerade around this this Brands Hatch circuit um, he's managing to hang on and get some decent drive and not being punished too much down the the long straights that we have here and really take really able to take advantage of the the agility of the short wheelbase of that roof as we saw um, when he was trying to get um, his way past uh, Angel Sayas Juan earlier in the race, that, that roof and the way he drives it, he's very, very quick um, through the tight, twisty stuff. Uh, Druids especially, we saw him gaining significantly on everybody as he came up into Druids. So what was a two-way fight for the lead is absolutely now a, a three-way fight for the lead. And I, to be fair, I think Pomerade's going to have his work cut out to get around Juan Jose Sanchez in front of him and indeed he decides that he's going to try and hot lap him out of the race and Pomerad is the first to blink, he's in the pits, he's the first of the front runners to, to take his pit stop and as he trundles down the pit lane here on the limiter it seems like it'll take absolutely forever for him to get anywhere but of course he started way up the field so he's got the advantage of uh, having a, a pit carriage uh, way down near the, the pit exit so um, he's not going to spend very long, if any time at all, on the pit limiter uh, after the pit stop is finished. He's, he's, as soon as that car drops down, he can just nail the throttle uh, and off he goes. And he'll be looking to take advantage of his superior speed to, to try and get the undercut F1 style in the pit stops here. He'll be 
Um, now putting in some blinding laps. He's come out, unfortunately, in a little bit of traffic. He's got Jonas Van Verwerke just ahead of him. Um, but bearing in mind that Van Verwerke is running uh, laps in and around the, the 25s, uh, I can't imagine that Sylvain Pomerade is going to be behind him for very long. And Pomerade will be um, looking to absolutely maximise his speed. He'll really be on it. He'll be um, giving it everything he's got. Uh, to try and make up that 1.8 second gap he had between him and the leader uh, in this, this pit stop window. Um, so as we look at Ashley Owen up front, Ashley Owen now is coming into clearways. Is he going to pit this time? Is he only going to give Pomerade one lap to try and get ahead? The answer is yes. Um, Owen pits, Sanchez pits. Um, so we're going to have a race on pit lane here for um, what will be effectively uh, be the leader of the race, Ashley Owen in the number 17 McLaren. Um, Again, on the limiter, but it seems so slow, believe me. Um, it really does seem like you're struggling. Um, with uh, Juan Jose Sanchez just in front of him, those two guys sitting in the pit lane, uh, and as they do that, let's keep an eye on Sylvain Pomerade and his progress. Pomerade, as we say, is just coming through clearways now. Um, gets on the throttle, buries the pedal, uh, gives it the full beans as he comes up the, uh, the Brabham straight here. And as I say that, I can see... Um, Ashley Owen and Juan Jose Sanchez exit in the pits and Sivan Pomerade's got it done by uh, pitting that lap early. He's managed to get ahead of uh, Ashley Owen and Juan Jose Sanchez who come out of the, the, the pits in the order they went in. Uh, Ashley Owen just ahead of Sanchez but uh, certainly not as far ahead as, uh, of Juan Jose Sanchez as he was when they went into the pit stops. But look at the lead that Pomerade's got. He was significantly quicker when these guys have finished their outlaps. I'll take a, uh, a cheeky peek at the lap charts and I'll let you know um, how much quicker it was. But it looks to me like he's turned a 1.8 second deficit into what is probably a good two second, two and a half second lead. So um, we'll have a quick look, but I wouldn't be surprised if he uh, uh, was quicker on his outlap. Um, to the tune of some three and a half or four seconds, which is an incredible job by uh, Sylvain Pomerade. He said he was quick, but um, he really seems to have wrapped his head around these pit stops and has really take advantage of it uh, to make sure that um, he doesn't have to pass these guys on the track. Um, as Jonas Van Verwerke, just in front of Ashley Owen there, gets it very, very wobbly and then decides, although these guys are racing full, permission, uh, full position, I think uh, Van Ver Verwerke has decided that he's going to let these guys go, and in, indeed he does. Uh, in fact, he, he was running a lap down, so um, he gets well out of the way, does exactly the right thing. So in terms of lap time, um, let's have a look at, at what happened here. Uh, Sylvain Pomerade's uh, in-lap, it's your in-lap that's slow, to be fair here, because uh, the start-finish line is right down the end of the pit straight, um, right down the end of the pits here at Brands Hatch. Um, Pomerade's in-lap was a 150.6. Um, if you contrast that to um, a 154.2 for Ashley Owen and a 153.3 for Juan Jose Sanchez. Um, so as we said, he, he's gained well over three, in the region of three, three and a half seconds uh, on that, that pit stop sequence. So he really has taken full advantage of his abilities, we see him getting a little bit wide there as he comes out of uh, uh, Hawthorns. No real dramas there, though. But he's uh, um, indeed turned to what was almost exactly a 1.8 second deficit into a 1.8 second lead. So Sylvain Pomerade now leads Ashley Owen by 1.8 seconds. Um, and Juan Jose Sanchez is again about a second back in third. So um, the names have changed, but the caps are about the same as they were. As Pomerade is just coming up now to, to put a lap on Tian Dames, and Dames is a, an old hand at this championship in a very bent-looking BMW, it has to be said, so uh, I'm fairly certain that Tian will just uh, get out of the way and let these guys run through. So, gather my... my, uh, my take a deep breath, gather my thoughts a little bit here. Um, if we look back through the pack um, at what's been going on, um, I was just looking at the, uh, a battle between um, Michael and Michael. Um, Michael um, Stephen um, was very, very close to, to Michael Booth, but there, there's a bit of a gap developed there, so it looks to me like Booth has dropped it. Um, I'm, I'll have a quick sneaky look at that and just see if I can get an idea. They were running incredibly close on the circuit, and they were, and indeed, just as I say that, um, 
everyone's lucky to avoid Daniel Allencar who loses it coming out of uh, Graham Hill Bend, the left-hander, onto the Cooper Strait. It's very, very easy to do. Um, and he's going to be in uh, some kind of purgatory now as he's very, very slow. And pretty much the entire world is going to make his way past, their, their way past him to put for what will be for some of these guys. Come on, Daniel, get yourself out of the way. Uh, for some of these guys, the fourth lap that they'll be putting on... Um, uh, Daniel Allen Carl, so not ideal. Um, he'll it, certainly be wanting to do uh, the best that he possibly can do, but dropped it there coming out of Graham Hill Bend. But um, lots and lots of people have done that before, and <laughs> lots and lots of people will do it uh, from this point onwards, I'm fairly sure. So up front, Sylvain Pomeroy continues to, to push home his advantage. He now leads by uh, 2.4 seconds uh, from Ashley Owen. Ashley Owen, who now has a very racy looking Juan Jose Sanchez all over the back of him. Uh, there's just two tenths of a second separating second and third, um, so we'll keep a good eye on that. Um, in terms of uh, other battles taking place down through the, the field, uh, Richard Wilde in the uh, uh, the number 70 machine uh, is locked in a, a fairly great, uh, fairly tough battle with Arthur Chan in the number 50 rough. Um, and again, um, that roof so fast out of uh, Druids, and as it plunged down into to Graham, he'll bend it so agile and he gets a great run, but Richard Wilde says, I'm not having any of that, if you want to try and pass me, get it on the grass. Chan thinks about it, gets a couple of wheels up there, but then decides that maybe, you know, now isn't the time to do it. Um, gets a fantastic drive out of Surtees, and as they run down Hawthorne Hill under Johnny Herbert Bridge now, um, into the, the very, very fast right-hander at Hawthorne's, um, a corner taken at over 100 miles an hour, it's a Oh, and they come across, who was that, parked in the road? Wow, fantastic job getting out of the way then. Um, Michael Booth, in fact. So Michael Booth, who we saw fighting hard for eighth place, has dropped it. Um, let's go back and have a look and see what's happened there, because Michael Booth did um, a fantastic job of getting out of everybody's way um, as the pack came screaming through there. Um, so, yeah, it looks to me like he's just... Yeah, he's done that all on his own. He was he was running in fresh air, and as we look at the replay, you'll see it comes around Hawthorns and it actually unloads the right rear wheel. Um, that right rear wheel being off the ground, and whoo, <laughs> um, just looking at it from Arthur Chan's point of view, there was a fag paper width between the front of Arthur Chan um, in that number 50 roof and uh, an oblivion, really, as Michael Booth was uh, carrying out a three-point turn in the middle of the circuit, but Booth does a fantastic job getting that roof out of the way as quickly as he possibly can do, and um, it's something we've seen as this series becomes more mature and um, the guys get more used to, to running in this series. They, um, um, they're getting a lot better at avoiding one another, and what last season... What's, what would have last season been a significant incident is uh, is now um, not so much. These guys are getting away with it a little bit. So in terms of good battles, the number 51 is our friend Stephen Burke again, who we saw um, running wide and giving Ellis Stevens a place up into 30s. Um, they're at it again, Stevens and, uh, and Burke side by side. Um, as they run down the Brabham Strait, as they go into uh, Paddock Hill Bend now. Um, Stevens gets a slightly better exit, but um, Burke's taking a good line, a great line, and Stevens gets that horribly wrong. Um, oh dear, um, and it looks to me like that was Stephen Burke's last, last life. It looks to me like he's been uh, disqualified from the race due to uh, uh, gathering too many racing incidents, and Ellis Stevens got that horribly wrong there. I don't know if we can have a, a, a look back. Um, at what happened there, but Stephen's got that a, a bit wrong, um, so we've lost Burke, unfortunately, from the race. Um, right, so back up front, Sylvain Pamarod continues to drive away. Um, two and a half seconds now is the lead from Ashley Owen. Ashley Owen has managed to put a little bit of a gap on uh, Juan Jose Sanchez. There is a gap now of uh, just about half a second between uh, Ashley Owen and Juan Jose Sanchez. Um, there is then a significant gap somewhere in the region of 12 seconds between Juan Jose Sanchez in third place and Alain Tessier in fourth place. Um, Tessier is um, he's, he's putting in fairly good lap times uh, and he'll be reasonably pleased um, with his position. He, he, he's running um, at the moment low 124s. He, he has been as low as 123.5 recently but bearing in mind that Tessier started in seventh place he certainly won't um, be too upset to be running in in fourth 
but there is a, a big gap and there are gaps appearing all over the um, all over the field now. One place where there isn't a gap is um, just behind uh, Richard Wide, Jose Almeida. As we look at Jose Almeida in the number 58 machine, loops it round into clearways. And how did uh, Arthur Chan, Michael Hall and Matt Dalton ahead of him avoid him? Um, as you'll see there, I don't know how everyone got through that uh, in one piece, but um, as Almeida comes out of clearways, he drops it all on his own. Um, Dalton has to take to the grass on the left to get around him, um, giving um, Michael Hall and um, Arthur Chan the opportunity to go past him around the, uh, the inside of the bend. Uh, and these three guys, running nose to tail before that incident, um, are running nose to tail after the incident. So uh, Matt Dalton running a very, very creditable, creditable eighth place. Um, now just ahead of, of Michael Hall. I'm, I'm amazed Dalton managed to keep that place, to be honest with you. Bearing in mind, he was the one who had to take to the grass, and there isn't a lot of traction on the grass in iRacing. As Chan has a look around the outside of Michael Hall going into Hawthorns, Hall's going to have to keep that very, very tight, the axe, uh, apex in the exit, and he does indeed. Chan slots in behind him. As they drop down now into Dingle Dell, Matt Dalton will get that power on, and he'll be looking to, to get away from these guys, be quick up through Sheen, and then um, get his braking right for the left-hander at Sterling's. Uh, Arthur Chan's looking very, very interested in the, the back end of Michael Hall, if you'll excuse the, uh, um, the parlance. Um, and keeping a watching brief on these guys is Rich Jacobs in the, the black and orange uh, McLaren, just sitting a second behind uh, Arthur Chan. Again, <laughs> just keeping an eye on these guys and uh, obviously ready to take advantage of any little minor incidents we might have. Um, this is certainly the closest battle in the top ten at the moment, so... Um, Dalton will be absolutely delighted with um, his progress in this race. Um, he, Dalton started down in 15th position on the grid, um, so to be running in 8th place, he'll be very pleased with that, as uh, I say that Rinch Jacobs is now cruised up to the back of Arthur Chan, um, and this three-way fight that was a four-way fight is now a four-way fight again, um, as Michael Hall is about as close as we've seen him for the last lap or so um, behind Matt Dalton, as Dalton gets the power down coming out of Surtees and it's a BMW versus BMW battle there. Michael Hall looks to the inside but I don't think he's close enough to make that work. No, he certainly isn't. He tucks back in behind uh, Matt Dalton and Matt Dalton has managed to uh, to get, get away um, to a certain extent as they ran down the hill. He's got two or three car lengths and to be fair in this series that's a, a bit of a long way. Um, the gaps are usually very, very close, as Arthur Chan is doing a fantastic job of demonstrating by um, wiping his nose all over the back of Michael Hall's car. Um, so, um, it's four for eighth place. Matt Dalton leads Michael Hall, Arthur Chan and Rinks Jacobs as these guys climb on the brakes and um, try and get the power down as early as they possibly can around that long, sweeping right-hander at clearways. It really is tempting just to plant the throttle a little bit too early, but if you do, you do what Jose Almeida did a couple of laps ago, and you will just loop the car around, um, and that will be all. You'll be done for, unfortunately. Um, so, up front, I'll just keep you abreast. We won't necessarily look at it. This is a great battle to keep focusing on now, but I'll keep you appraised of the times. Uh, Pomerade still leads by uh, a reasonable margin. He's 2.7 seconds ahead of Owen now. Juan Jose Sanchez a, a further eight tenths of a second back from Owen in third place. Those gaps pretty much static for the last few laps. The same can't be said of uh, this battle we're watching now. Matt, Matt Dalton in eighth place um, while doing a pretty good job actually. <laughs> he's uh, he's um, making that BMW Z4 pretty wide. Uh, and at the same time, he's been cruising up to the back of Richard Wilde ahead of him. Um, I don't know if Wilde's had a problem, but that's as close as we've seen um, Matt Dalton beat to Richard Wilde in the last couple of laps. So having made up seven places to get to eighth place, can Matt Dalton take seventh place from Richard Wilde? Wilde? And um, in terms of lap time... Um, while didn't have a great last lap, he was running um, about a second off of his ultimate pace, so I guess he may well have put a wheel off somewhere, but to be fair, that BMW Z4 GT3 of Richard Wilde, um, the eBay Motors machine, isn't looking quick. Um, Wilde is a, a, a good old peddler, we've seen him fast in a number of series, um, but from a consistent run of... Um, laps in the 124s. His last two laps have been a 125.8 and a 126.1 as opposed to Dalton whose last lap was a 124.6 so um, Matt Dalton really getting on with it 
Um, but no disrespect to him, it looks like Richard Wilde is going backwards um, as we're into the final couple of laps here. Matt Bal Dalton will be keen to take advantage uh, as much as he can do. It's just behind him, it looks like it's gone a little bit wrong. Um, and that's Arthur Chan in the number 50 uh, roof has looped it uh, going into 30s. I'll go back and have a quick uh, peek at that. And it will be a very quick peek because I don't want to miss any of the action ahead. Um, I don't think there was any contact there. Um, it looks to me like Arthur Chan has... Uh, just got it a little bit wrong. Yep, indeed, under the brakes. He's outbraked himself. He's got it's, it's outside two wheels on the grass, and that's all she wrote. And to Arthur Chan's eternal credit, uh, bearing in mind he was running in such, such a tight battle, he sits and waits and very patiently lets three or four guys by to make sure he's not getting uh, involved in anybody else's race. So, so that changes things a, a little bit as we're back with Dalton. Uh, who keeps the pressure on Richard Wilde. Um, what that's done, it's given Michael Hall behind a, a little bit of a chance to have a bit of a breather. He no longer has Arthur Chan um, literally uh, nibbling chunks out of his bumper. Um, he's got uh, the luxury of almost an entire second and a half back to Ridge Jacobs behind him. So that will give Michael Hall the ability to start looking forward rather than backwards. And indeed, as they run down through Graham Hill Bend and back along the Cooper Strait, he's looking a bit racy. He's having a good look at the back of Matt Dalton there. Uh, Dalton has had to drop away from Wild a little bit. He's having to start to drive a little bit more defensively. So Arthur Chan dropping out has really caused Matt Dalton some problems. Um, it's freed Michael Hall up. Michael Hall has been able to stop driving the defensive race he was having to drive before. Um, and he's now able to attack Dalton. Um, as a result, Dalton's had to drop back a little bit from Richard Wilde as Hall has a little look up the inside there. That's not a great place for an overtake and these guys should be single file all the way down through Dingle Dell and up through Sheen Curve. Uh, you can start getting a little bit racy if you want to into Surtees as Dalton runs wide. He's slow on the power, uh, but there really isn't space there for Michael Hall to make his way past. And as I say that, um, it looks like the best drive out of Surty, uh, sorry, out of Sterling's there, running down to Clearways with Rinch Jacobs. So um, Richard Wilde would be breathing a huge sigh of relief because he was getting gobbled up in a big way, um, whatever his issues were, and I'm honestly not sure what they were. Um, he's managed to uh, gather himself back together, and he's back in the low 125s. Um, and now the pressure really is on Matt Dalton as Michael Hall has a bit of a, just a little bit of a glance up the inside of... Um, Matt Dalton, and it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. These guys are now on the penultimate lap, um, so we'll have this lap and one more lap, and then that will be all she wrote. This second round of the BSR TV GT Sprint Cup, um, delivering exactly on the promise we saw last week at Silverstone, as Matt Dalton can't get the power down coming out of Surtees there, and he's got a poor exit. He's going to have to tuck in behind Michael Hall going into. Hawthorns and Rinch Jacobs has a little bit of a, a look but decides he's not going to make a move so these guys literally now nose to tail. Matt Dalton um, will be kicking himself um, with just this lap and one more to go. He didn't want to make any mistakes between there and the end but he was under some relentless pressure from Michael Hall and he can certainly be forgiven for, for getting a, a wheel out of place there coming out of Surtees and with such a long long run and with it being downhill as well if you if you get a slow run and a, the car behind you gets a good run, then you're pretty much done for, to be honest with you. Um, and indeed, Dalton Pitts, oh, I think he's, uh, I think he's got his fuel wrong there. Um, he certainly doesn't look like he's got any damage, uh, but he's had to pull into the pit. So poor old Matt Dalton. Um, we'll confirm it after the race, but my guess would be um, that he's got that wrong in terms of fueling, um, and it's, it's all come, it's all come to an end for him. So. We're on the last lap. Let's have a look back up front. Uh, Sylvain Pomerade continues on his merry way. He's uh, just on the run down into Sterling's now. He's got this corner and one more, and then he's he's home um, with maximum 50 points from this race. And boy, does he deserve it. Those middle laps were almost Schumacher-esque around the pit stop. He was much, much quicker than everybody else. And Sylvain Pomerade, who managed to turn a 1.8 second deficit before his stop into a 1.8 second lead after his stop, takes the chequered flag and wow, he'll be delighted with that. Um, Ashley Owen manages to resist the attentions of Juan Jose Sanchez to bring um, his machine home in second place. Then there's a long gap to Alan Tessier, who's just coming up to the start-finish line now. And 
Tessier takes fourth place, so a great result for uh, Tessier. He'll be delighted starting where he did. Michael Stephen, uh, the warrior that he is, has fought his way up to fifth place, uh, and he'll be chuffed to bits with that, bearing in mind he started outside the top ten in eleventh place. Uh, Tom Ward, um, a little victory uh, slide there through uh, Paddock Hill Bend, brings the number nine McLaren home in sixth place. Richard Wilde uh, manages to hang on to that seventh place. Uh, Michael Hall inherited eighth place after Matt Dalton had to leave the circuit for whatever reason. Rinch Jacobs brings the number seven uh, orange and black machine home in ninth place. Um, and Tom Stanley, uh, Tom Stanley will be chuffed to bits with a top ten finish. Um, kind of came from nowhere really, Tom Stanley. We weren't talking about him uh, hardly at all, but it looks to me like he was in a bit of a a battle with Jose Almeida. Um, there was just one tenth of a second between Stanley in 10th and 11th. Uh, 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 Jose Almeida in 11th place. Easy for me to say. Matt Dalton um, just takes the, the, the checkered flag now and finishes in 16th place. Some 1 minute and 16 seconds down the leader and we'll try and find out what's happened there. So, wow, a fantastic race. Um, lots going on. Probably more going on on the track than we could bring you on the pictures. I, I hope... Uh, there, there wasn't too much uh, uh, lack of synchronization. I was jumping around all over the place trying to bring you all the stories as I was seeing them. So I probably made it hard on poor old Laura, our director tonight. So um, I'm sure that um, the pictures you were seeing pretty much accurately represented what we were talking about. Um, we're, we're just going to go and um, see if we can grab a hold of uh, Matt Dalton, see if we can have a chat with him. Um, um, we'll, we'll see if we can grab a word with him. For those who are regular viewers of BSR TV, you'll know that Matt Dalton is the um, was the voice of um, um, previous Monday night um, fun and games we had here on uh, BSR TV. Um, he's a guy that I race with a lot, and sometimes we see eye to eye, and sometimes we don't. <laughs> we had a fairly effective Barney just last Friday night, um, but it'll be interesting to find out from Matt what happened there. Uh, which bit? So at the end, Matt, um, we saw you pull into the pit fairly late on. Fuel problems? Yeah, I was a lap short. I, I tried pitting early to try and leapfrog the guys because early on in the race I sort of caught up to a big pack and I thought there was a good chance of them taking each other out and holding each other up. So I, I pitted early to try and jump them and uh, got it wrong by about 0.6 of a lap. So I needed to jump in for a quick stop and go. Quick splash. Uh -huh. I mean, so you're locked in a great battle there with uh, Richard Wilde and Michael Hall. Um, Arthur Chan did you uh, did you a bit of a disservice by spinning all on his own because it freed Michael Hall up to to have a nibble at the back of you there before you had to take your pit stop. Um, it, it little was bit fairly robust there for for a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. People like to race elbows out in this series, don't they? But um, you know, that's, I'm not too unhappy with the result to be honest. It's uh, like I said, I, my mistake with the fuel. So you know, you have to spit the thing sort of take the good rough with the smooth a little bit and there was a few people throwing elbows around and all sorts in that and I'm you know you just got to be happy to finish Brilliant well commiserations Matt and thanks for taking the time to come and talk to us I know it's not always the best thing in the world when it's gone a little bit wrong and someone says oh come and describe your misfortune to us indeed <laughs> so uh, th <laughs> no, th th fine. thanks for taking the time Matt and good luck for next week buddy Cheers Right so there we have it another week of the BSR TV GT Sprint Cup Series um, in the book um, the, uh, the classic tracks keep on coming. We had Silverstone last week. We've had Brands Hatch GP this week. Next Tuesday night will be spa Um So come and join us for that. That's certainly going to be very, very interesting. Um, what I would imagine would be a very strong McLaren circuit. Um, lots of very long straights there, but um, usually the minute I make a definitive statement, I'm proving to be completely wrong. So we'll expect no change there. So uh, we'll get going again about uh, 10 past 8 next Tuesday night. If you're about, come and join us by all means. Um, I've been Marcus Narris. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for putting up with the, uh, the prattling on. We kind of got there in the end. Um, my thanks uh, go out to, to Laura Bond, who was our director this evening and has been shouting in my ear and telling me what I should be looking at and what I should be talking about to make sure you guys are kept up to date with the latest race action. Um, so thanks very much, Laura, for that and also for bringing you the pictures. Uh, big thanks to Steve Richardson, the series uh, organiser, who's uh, working away in the background, um, as ever, um, to make sure that this series runs smoothly. So, we'll see you in seven days' time in uh, sunny Belgium. Um, 
very rarely sunny to be fair whenever I've been there but um, we've got some great racing to look forward to um, as we look forward to round three of the BSR TV GT Sprint Cup. I hope to see you there. Have a good week. We'll see you next week. Cheers.